Hello everyone, welcome to BU 4869, Management and Organizational Behavior. I'm Dr. Tom Marshall and I'll be your professor for the next uh, several months. And today we're going to just give you an introduction as we look into chapter one about the dynamics of organizational behavior as it applies to the organization and the environment. Uh, but first, just, uh, just to take care of some housework. Uh, make sure you've got the syllabus read, that uh, you understand all of the requirements for it, that you understand the required reading for this uh, course, and that you keep up with the syllabus. My contact information will be uh, on the syllabus, so if you need to contact me via email or phone me, uh, you have all that information there. And I've also, at the beginning of the presentation, uh, giving you my cell number. So uh, make sure you just keep up with all of that and uh, you're going to do well over the course of the next uh, four months as we take a look at how people and organizations interact. Hello everyone. Welcome to BU 4869 Management and Organizational Behavior. I'm Dr. Tom Marshall and I will be your professor for this course. And some of you, I believe, I've already had before in other classes. So uh, you should be used to how I do uh, uh, the flow and the instruction. For those of you who are not familiar uh, with me or haven't had me before, uh, this is a online class. And uh, so we'll be doing and interacting online. You will have some discussion questions, forum questions that will be given to you each week and your response to those will count for your attendance and uh, of course you know you have to have uh, no less than nine absences in order to graduate or to pass the course so um, just make sure you keep that in mind uh, I'll give you my uh, cell number it should be on the syllabus uh, but my contact information as well should be on the syllabus, but my cell number is 901-270-6257, just in case you need that and uh, don't have access to uh, uh, this uh, presentation for whatever reason, you now have my phone number. So contact me for anything that may come up uh, that you may have difficulties with. So uh, let's go ahead and begin. Uh, please make sure you have read the syllabus and you understand all the requirements that are going to be asked of you this, uh, for this course. Now, just to let you know, this book may be familiar with those of you who have had me in uh, other classes that deal with organizational behavior. This course is a BU, which is business uh, course. I also teach this course in organizational leadership. Uh, however, because the material is pretty much the same, I keep the same book. So I will alter the content uh, a little bit, but uh, for the most part, uh, we'll come back and uh, uh, use the same book and uh, use the uh, material within it. Well, let's go ahead and get started with our first chapter. Now this slide just talks about the learning objectives and uh, the things that we are targeting as far as learning objectives uh, go. Uh, so I'll let you guys kind of uh, get an idea by looking at this, uh, but primarily just to uh, gloss over it, we want to define uh, the terms uh, and how it impacts both personal and organizational success. We want to take a look at management functions we want to look at uh, the context in which uh, organizational behavior takes place, which means uh, relationships. We want to be able to look at different perspectives on organizational behavior. We want to be able to describe the role of org behavior and management and discuss the role of research in org behavior. And then we want to look at the framework around which this book is organized, but uh, we're not going to focus a whole lot on that other than just to tell you right now at the beginning, uh, each chapter uh, is outlined in your syllabus as far as your reading requirements. Make sure you follow that. Some days are uh, require more reading than others, but uh, make sure you keep up with the reading 
as it's outlined in the syllabus and that's what you'll be responsible for. Now what is organizational behavior? Well, just to begin with, it's the study of human behavior in organizational settings. Uh, it's also the interface between the human and the organization and the organization itself. Now, when you're looking at organizational behavior, you are gleaning much from the social sciences. And when I say social sciences, I'm talking about fields that include uh, psychology, sociology, philosophy, anthropology, political science. So you're taking a look at many different social science disciplines all wrapped up into this one concept. Uh, what we want to do is study how the human and the organization interact. And the goal ultimately is to increase performance, increase efficiency and effectiveness in the workplace. And in order to do that, we need to know uh, different things about human, uh, the human condition, uh, such as, for instance, motivation. What motivates people? What motivates you to come to class or take this course? Uh, it's not because maybe you just have a burning desire to learn about organizational behavior. Uh, your desire is to get a degree. And that degree is going to allow you, hopefully, to achieve whatever goal you have in life. And for some, it may be business, it may be ministry, it may be other areas, uh, mission work, and so forth. But you are motivated to do what you're doing right now because you're trying to reach an end goal or an end result. Well, that same thing applies in business. Why do people go to work? Why do people uh, do the things that they do within the context of a work relationship uh, in uh, the environment that we call uh, a job? Uh, well, for the same reason. They're trying to achieve a ultimate goal. Some, it may be they're there for the paycheck. Some, it may be because they love the field and have dedicated their lives to it, such as maybe medicine. Uh, and others, there may be other reasons. They may try to get a degree to uh, uh, get a better uh, position in life so that they can leave their job and maybe find better and bigger things. There's all types of reasons for that, just one uh, concept called motivation. Well, when you take a look at all the different things that can influence a person and you put them within the context of a business and an organization, you need to be very well versed in these concepts and ideas so that you can understand how people uh, think, how they feel, how they operate, so that you can leverage that to get a better and more productive worker within the context of that business. So. This is why we study uh, organizational behavior, and that's the value of organizational behavior. Now, when we take a look at the nature of organizational behavior, if you see here in figure 1-1, one, one, you have externally, you have the environment, and the environment is any and everything that is outside that can influence your organization or the person. Now, you have two other elements that take place, uh, that come together. You have human behavior, and then you have the organization itself. So from the environment, you have the organization. From the environment, you have human beings. Uh, now, what I mean by human beings is that you have people who come into the organization and they're going to have diverse ideas, feelings, values, um, habits, and so forth. So they're going to come in from the environment, and they're going to be a part of this setting right here. Well, the environment also will influence the organization. You may have a uh, economic condition that will influence the organization. You may have political changes that influence the organization. So the environment affects the organization, 
uh, and the organization in fact uh, affects the uh, the environment and the human beings. Now both of them come together to create the individual organization interface. So everything that the environment produces from a human dimension and from a organizational dimension come together and where they come together is what we call the individual organization interface. Now uh, they both are interdependent as you see here they're connected. Uh, what humans do affects the organization and overall what the organization does will affect the human and both of them uh, will affect the environment and the environment will affect the uh, organization and the people. So there is a big circle and cycle that operates uh, from, the, from the environment to the people to the organization itself. Uh, they affect each other and uh, it's a continuous cycle too. So uh, this is the nature of organizational behavior. The environment uh, has a role in how humans and the organization interact. Uh, the organization and the individual interact and have an influence on the environment. Now why should we study organizational behavior? Well, you can become a better employee. You might be able to glean uh, ideas if you're an employee now in some of the areas that your managers may not even have considered. For instance, we talked about motivation earlier. You know, if you understand what motivates you, then you might be able to better communicate to the manager. You know, um, I would prefer instead of a day off, uh, a raise. You know, I'm more tangibly oriented or tangibly uh, motivated than uh, maybe uh, having a, a sense of accomplishment. Uh, so understanding those ideas, and we'll talk about the tangible and intangible rewards and all of that, that affects motivation, but knowing how people behave can make you a better employee. It can make you a better manager. Understanding how people interact, what to do in, in certain cases, how systems are put together, uh, especially when it comes to people and teams and all of that, that can help you as well. And understand how people behave and why they do what they do. This is why psychologists are so popular because they help people understand why they feel and think and do the things that they do. Well, all this is is just putting it within the context of a business uh, or a uh, work environment and it helps on focusing uh, and developing a global mindset. You know, there's been three things that has revolutionized business and it has precipitated the need for classes like this. And this is gonna be very important, so I'm gonna write this on the uh, slide and you need to take note of it because you may see it on the test. But there have been three uh, conditions or there have been three things that has revolutionized business. Number one, that is diversity. Now, many of you were not around when the Civil Rights Act of 64 was signed into law. The Civil Rights Act said that you cannot discriminate against a person based on age, sex, uh, race, uh, religion, uh, and any of these things. Uh, but it didn't have much of a uh, impact because it wasn't enforced. The Civil Rights Act of 93, the amended Civil Rights Act of 93 came around and it provided for what we call punitive damages which means that if you are found guilty of discrimination, then you can be fined and depending on the size of your company, the size of that fine could be very, very expensive. So this made business owners take notice of how they were treating 
their employees, uh, not just while they were working, but also how they hired, uh, the decisions to hire and so forth. So this had a big effect, effect on how organizations operate uh, from that period on. Now, number two is technology. Today we are inundated with technology. In fact, when one thing is created, it's already outdated. But we are able, because of technology, to uh, communicate with people, uh, get things done faster. Also, we see the creeping in of technology and replacing humans. Think about it, when you go to Kroger or Walmart, and you go into that little self-checkout aisle, you may not think much about it, but this is why you don't see many employees in these places anymore, because technology has replaced them. And it'll be interesting to see how, in the future, technology will have even more of an impact on business. As we start to take a look at replacing the things that uh, humans have already been doing historically, such as something as simple as running a restaurant. Uh, there are McDonald's right now in certain areas where there are no humans there. It's all automated. Even the drive through window is automated. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how technology has changed uh, or is changing the face of business today. And then finally, we see the third influence, and that's globalism. You know, globalism or globalization is the company leveraging a broader market or their uh, success uh, which enables them to go into a global market. And that means they can expand their offering and products. So you have uh, a really a small, small world when you look at it from the perspective of business today. But just because you're going global doesn't mean that everything is going to be fine. There are challenges that have um, uh, really made or have broken companies. Uh, just the culture, uh, knowing the uh, way people act and their values, uh, that's been a challenge for a lot of them. Instability, especially political instability, has been another challenge for these uh, companies. So. There are pros and there are also cons with globalization. But these are three of the occurrences or, or things that have revolutionized business and it's made courses like organizational behavior necessary. Now organizations that successfully implement these uh, behavioral principles have motivated, they've engaged employees, whose goals align with business strategy. And that's what you want. You want the people aligned with the business. Whatever you're after, you want them to be after. What your um, concerns are should be theirs. And you want also cohesion. You want to also have unity. You want to have motivation. And these things aren't gonna come just by uh, putting them in a workstation and telling them to go to work. You're gonna have to, as a manager, be able to help facilitate these outcomes. You also have strong leadership and direction, and we're going to talk about leadership and what makes a leader. What's the difference between a leader and a manager? So we're going to take a look at those, and then you'll have better bottom lines, and that's what you want to have. It, it ultimately, is a better bottom line. You want your company working at peak efficiency, and you want them to be able to uh, have that desire to give more to the organization. We're in a point now with globalization and technology and diversity. We are competing now with a whole world of, of competition, of rivals. So we have to be on top. And we're gonna take a look from a business strategy standpoint, how to get there and how to stay there. Well folks, that should finish us up for today. Uh, I think we're off to a good start again. Don't forget now to uh, make sure you look at the syllabus, that you go into Moodle and sign the statement that you have read the syllabus. 
and um, that you will keep up with the reading and all of the requirements that we have. I believe we're going to uh, glean a lot from this course. Uh, I'll be praying for you. In fact, let me pray for you now. Lord, I just pray for these students. Lord, bless them and their efforts. And Lord, the time that we spend, Father, I pray that it won't be wasted, that we'll be good stewards, Lord, of the resources and the time that you've given us together. Father, I pray for uh, each one of these uh, individuals, Lord, as they go through life with all the demands on them. Father, I pray they start well and that they finish well. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, today, as you saw, we briefly looked at organizational behavior. We looked at some of the basic definitions that you're going to need to know. And then we saw how the environment, how the human, and how the workplace all interact and interface so that uh, things can get accomplished in organizations. Uh, this will work uh, in the uh, ministry as well as it does out in the secular world. So with th these basic foundations covered, tomorrow we're going to look a little bit more into chapter one. And until then, have a good day and we'll see you tomorrow.